you opened up in this subject yourself, particularly yeah. around the area of retiring yeah. as a top pro in your column in the Mail on Sunday. And you were very open and honest. You didn't really see it that way. You just wanted to tell it as it was without over-sensationalising well, anything. I, I didn't quite have the same problems back then in terms of when I was playing with social media and some, what some of the lads have to go through now with the online abuse and the criticism and all that. We, we didn't really have that. For me, playing was a joy. I, I very rarely... You might have a little bad spell or something go on in your life, but football was generally, over my career, a very happy time. Finishing was more difficult. Um, I probably should have spoken early, earlier, really. I find myself in a bit of a bad place a few years back now. And I only really started talking about it when, when prompted, when asked. You know, I've not really volunteered it before, probably because of shame, probably because embarrassment, probably because of fear of um, judgment. People thinking, oh, you know, that's typical football. Uh, you know, no, who cares about footballers? They, you know, they're rich and wealthy, and they've got loads mm. of money. You can't have problems. They're not real problems. Shame. Why shame? Shame that you aren't able to cope. Shame that you aren't able. You didn't communicate. Shame that you let people down. All those things, really. So, I, I spoke, and it, it was actually quite cathartic in some ways. I yeah. think, um, even though it was a few years ago, it's nice to actually speak about those things and put them to bed to a degree. And also as well, the the actual communication I've had off some ex-players who've took, I mean, I know a lot of ex-players anyway who are a good support network for each other. I'm friends with a lot. We have a WhatsApp group and stuff, but there's actually a few players who've reached out to me who, who are suffering in silence still, which it was remarkable reading their, their, their messages. So if you help one person, it's worth trying to be honest. I, th I think one one of the biggest problems you've got as a man not just footballers, is ego. You know, we've all got this ego where you don't want to tell someone that you're struggling to deal with something that other people find comfortable dealing with. Everyone's got different coping mechanisms. Everyone's stresses are different. Everyone's got their own rock bottom. So what makes you stressful, Jim? What makes you sad or what puts you in a bad place? I might find comfortable to deal with. I might... I might, I would actually probably... Might, the younger me probably look at a lot of people struggling and think, oh, come on, get on with it. That's, you're a bloke, you know. My whole life, yeah. three older brothers, working class family, in the football world, get on with it. Don't cry, get up, crack on. You know, that's the mentality. You just drilled into that way of thinking. And for Actually, anybody who hasn't read it, Danny, what, what were the things that were putting you in a bad spot? Well, I think it was a mixture of things. Um, my, the reality of not playing ever again takes a while for that to sink in because the first couple of years are great. You got, you're on a holiday. You know, you can go out when you want. You can go on holidays when you want. You spend more time with your family. I started unraveling a horrible picture of my finances. Um, you know, Simon obviously knows about the financial advice involved in football and these type of people who prey on young working class lads when they're 19, 20, 21. Hopefully that's getting better over time. But as the money increased in the Premier League in my era, more players were being manipulated and taken advantage of. And of course, when you don't have the intelligence, I mean, I'm talking about, financial intelligence sure. and any support of anybody around me who ever dealt with any money in my family or friends you are putting your trust in guys who look after other players who look after managers who work under the umbrella of a big financial company or you know glossy brochure they turn up and they they get you under the wing and spend 8, 10, 12 years forging a relationship with you and your family so when you come to finish and you start actually analysing your finances and thinking oh hey up actually where's that gone what's happened there one of the biggest problems is actually the embarrassment of sharing that with people and going, do you know what I did? And some people do go, especially those close to you who feel like they're comfortable enough to do it. They say to you, what the hell were you doing? Mm. That was obvious. I could see that. Yeah. Well, I couldn't. I'm sorry. I was so busy playing, traveling around Europe. Playing. Of course. Yeah. You know, like I was 23, 24, sign a document, do that investment, do that. I didn't know. I didn't. We didn't. And we, you end up, not, you've, you've blown your savings. Yeah. Well, a lot of them. And, yeah. what, and what happens is, of course, when you actually open up and when you start talking to people, all of a sudden you realise it's not I, it's we. And other people are having these different problems. And it's not just footballers. You know, that's been a good friend of mine, obviously won't mention him, but a good friend of mine lost, he saved up a bit over a few years of work and he saved him, saved up 20, 30 grand, I think it was. And somebody close to him had done him out of it. And he was devastated and he fell into a really dark place. This is while I was still playing. And I, I actually thought to myself at the time, well, it's not that much money, you know, why are you so down on it? But... His reality and his stress is his own. His rock bottom is his own. Yeah. My rock bottom was my own. It's One of my problems was I kept thinking to myself, people are just going to go, they're not going to have any sympathy. 
because they're not going to think that's a real life problem for me. You know, like it's it's. I've still got a car. I've still got a roof over my head. Yeah, he's but very I'm, comfortable. I'm struggling, he's a top I'm struggling to get yeah. through each day. Everything's hard work. Everything was hard work. You know, everything was a grind. You start alienating yourself from people. You start isolating. You start cutting people off around you who might want to give you the reality of where you're at because you don't want to hear it. So you cut yourself off from people who you care about. And that was the biggest thing. The, probably the message I would be sending is you don't have to compare how bad, you know, wh whatever it is you're dealing with, is your, you're allowed. You know, you're allowed, Simon, to be down because, even if somebody else doesn't think that's a major problem for that's yourself. Right. And, th and that's the hardest one. Not just for footballers, for men. What was the lowest point, Danny? Um, do you remember sitting on your own thinking I'm not going to get out of this no no but I remember I remember probably spending I remember one week spending most of the week on my own no work no I wasn't working that week I'd, I, the kids were away um, I was I, I was drinking taking drugs I was sitting on my own at times not sleeping not eating just thinking what, and then and then reality kicks in really thankfully for me my period probably a nine 12 month period of feeling like crap you know and then when i opened up and spoke to other people and i started reaching out to you know meeting other players and other other people who've been through it some of them have been in that place for three five seven eight years maybe more some you know so i felt quite blessed really so i was with good support and people around me i was able to to get some help which was which was key because also the stigma around therapy and getting some professional help you know, it might not be professional help. It might it might be your father. It might be your best friend. It might be your uncle, your brother. But a lot of people, I think, as soon as they say I've had to get professional help, they think people are going to judge them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're going to think they're weak. You know, we'll carry this on the other side of the break, Danny. But you being you, you you you're keen to help others who are in this predicament. If, about if you can, but I, I'm not, not sure I'm capable. Retiring. I'm not. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If, if of course, but I think there's people far more well equipped than me helping people like me than me. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.